All right, so let's get into the demo. So for context, this is a fictitious company named BigBuy.io. That is a retailer and has a lot of data on revenue across the entire United States for various stores that it has. During this demo, I'm going to cover four main topics. Number one, this is the curated dashboards. These are the pre-created dashboards that end users can consume. Number two is the self-service capabilities where you as a Sigma customer can allow your customers to explore on the dashboards that you created for them or give them access to the underlying data where they can create their own dashboards. Number three, we are gonna talk about data app in embeds. With our input table functionality that we previously talked about, you are able to create extremely flexible and full-blown applications within Sigma and then embed them as well. And then lastly, we're gonna talk about embedded AI where you can expose Sigma's AI capabilities to your customers so they can get to answers much faster. So historically, when you've talked about embedded analytics, you'd picture a dashboard that is showing a few different static KPIs in a SaaS platform. But at Sigma, we believe in making simple things easy and hard things possible. You would see this across the product. So instead of just being a small part of your product, we are shifting the paradigm where we believe Sigma could be the platform on which your customers build entire products. So let's get into it. I'm going to log in as myself. I'm a Sigma employee, but if you are a customer, you also provide some sandbox capabilities for you as well. Uh, let's get into curated dashboard first. Here, the dashboard that will load will pretty much show the art of the possible. Uh, you can create so many different types of charts and graphs and different KPIs within Sigma. So here is a, a visualization of a dashboard where you can see some cape, some uh, pie charts and you're able to see some line charts and KPIs. You have heat maps and maps, so many things. And then you can also interact with them. So instead of revenue, if you want it by units, the performance of the product, you're able to switch that across. You're also able to change this from Let's say you want to interact and say, you don't want the accessories as a product type, but you want something else. Let's pick computers. All of the underlying charts actually update based on that. So this is what I would call traditional embedded analytics where you have a dashboard that your end users can interact with. And just because it's out of the possible, I want to show that you have all sorts of bar charts. You can stack horizontally, stack vertically, you have trellis you can drill down across all of the different hierarchies like product type family line brand all the way down to the product name so a lot of these flexibilities you have different combo charts line charts again each customer or each of your kpi need to be represented in the form that it makes most sense and with sigma really we provide all the capabilities one of the differentiating factor of Sigma is actually the pivot table. A lot of times when we talk to customers and ask them, okay, what's the one thing that uh, the custom, your customers do when they get this dashboard that you create for them? They say they download to Excel and create a pivot table. So what we've done is just given you that pivot table here in Sigma that you can embed where you don't need to extract. You want to limit extraction because when you extract, there's less or like really no governance on the data that has been extracted. Um, so as you can see, this is a pivot table. You can have a pivot table product hierarchy as well, where you can get information across multiple different hierarchy levels as well. Uh, moving on to the map, where uh, each of these are set up in a way that they build on top of each other. So let's say if I select California, all of the other charts are going to update to then focus on California. Maybe I go into Monterey and then I click on that and the underlying charts also update based on the user zip and the store zip. So a lot of cool drill down functionality. You have scatter plots uh, and then a lot of people like Sankey. So we have that as well. Uh, let's say you like one of these charts and you want to export them. You can all, always like take a snapshot or 
or download it as a PNG, put it in your text that you are sharing with your executive leadership. At any point in time, you can also update the filters across the entire dashboard. And all of that interactivity is possible within Sigma. So this white box that you're seeing, that is Sigma, which is seamlessly embedded in the outside application that is Big Pies. So that was the, the curated dashboard portion. Next is self-service. So let's go back into self-service. Self-service is basically the functionality that allows the full Sigma dashboard to be ex exposed to your end users. So let's click into it. <clears throat> this is really where Sigma starts getting differentiated from a lot of competitors in the market. There is a crawl, walk, run approach with our customers. And we see a lot of our customers traditionally would start with the curated dashboards, but as their end users get familiarized with um, how to interact with analytics, uh, our customers are able to move them over to higher tiers of interactivity. And with self-service, you can do a lot. This is again, the same dashboard that I opened, but now it has a lot more functionality. I'm gonna click on this button here, which is again, outside the iframe. And you're able to do a lot more. Let's say I really like the dashboard that has been created, but I want to modify certain things. Uh, so I can actually copy that workbook and let's say name it. And give it a description, make a copy. And then now I can actually edit this workbook. This is now my own workbook. As you can see, you see new controls here for adding tables, pivot tables, input tables, and number of different charts, and adding more controls. We also have a lot of new UI elements that we keep on adding. And then you can also have layout-based things where you can add models, tab containers, popovers, and so on. So now again, this is your own workbook that you can do a lot more. Let's say if you are if you are ready to save it, and publish it, uh, you can also then save something as a bookmark and and then you're going to also mark it as a default of this uh, description of the bookmark so as you can see you can do a lot of interactive things right here in sigma embedded let's say for example You want to create a brand new dashboard. So let me go back into self-service. You will see the same dashboard here. And then I say, I want to create a brand new workbook. And now in this scenario, I'm gonna say solution review, new workbook. My very first workbook. I'm gonna hit create. And you would start off with a blank canvas. And now you can bring in different tables. Uh, you can go and find the things that you have access to. I'm gonna select this big buy point of sale information. And as you could see, this has RLS already applied. So if you are customer one of big buys, you would see your own data. If you're customer two, you would see your own data and so on. You can also layer it by hierarchy in the organizations where the store will just see their own information, regional managers would see the entire region's information and so on. So now again, you have this spreadsheet interface now in front of you and you are able to do a lot more. Let's say I want to add another column here. And I say, I want to calculate profit. I'm gonna move this here. And so it would be revenue minus cost of goods sold. So there you have it. When you delete this column, and there you have it. You have a profit column. So now again, you're interacting with the data, you're creating new uh, insights, you're also able to group different things. Let's say if you want to group by product type. And now you have this grouping available. So once you're ready, you can publish it. 
this work to get saved at that point again if you want to share it out share this workbook you can share it as well uh, with an entire team or a user so the self services is super important as as you have users that are traditionally more savvy with analytics and you want to start with the crawl approach where you give them curated dashboard but as you get familiar you want to move on to a self-service based model all right let's go into the next part of this demo which is data application this really is the extension of the dashboard what you've seen so far is again very bi focused interface where you have charts and graphs and tables and pivot tables but data application is a brand new thing and embedding applications you create and allowing your end users to interact with that is even better so here i have a demand planning application and this demand planning application really let's say empowers business units to create modify and collaborate on forecast scenarios is a very governed approach and I'll, I'll go through what that means so here you see just a summary of all all the information last year revenue actual revenue projected revenue and you know the actual target static forecast in line chart but down here this is where the fun is you as a user can go in and create a new forecast i'm gonna say solution review forecast and now I can go in, I can look at all this information and then start adding my own information. So let's say on this week, this is a static forecast and then my forecast is, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna close this much. It will automatically calculate based on this information that I am short, I can leave some comments, maybe we'll make it up next week. And you can keep adding more information about all of these dates you save it and now this forecast gets submitted to your manager for review uh, if you are a manager you can also go in here and see pending forecasts that you need to approve and approve forecasts that uh, you or some one of your peers might have approved so again we are now into a, a mode where you are creating an experience where you're able to interact and get more information from your end users. Uh, this is just one of the examples, but you can, you can create interactive forms. You can have tables where you accept information from your users. You can send out NPS surveys. All of that can be built on top of input tables and users can interact with it in your application. Let's move on to the next thing, which is AI. So I have this button here, I'm gonna click, and then we are going into the ask interface that Sigma has built. So Sigma's AI capabilities are built on four main principles. The first thing is discoverability. The second, transparency. The third is showing your work, and number four, is a path forward and I'll show what all of this these things mean so I'm gonna start off with asking a very simple question uh, show me the revenue trend uh, by year and I'm gonna hit enter and see the magic of our Sigma and as you can see it when this thing loads this is part of your application there is no mention of sigma or the traditional header that you would see internally um, and what it did right now is it went and selected one of the trusted data sources is giving you some more information here uh, it's thinking and so let's go all the way to the top here and see what it did it selected a data model and then because i asked by year it is trying to order by date and finding the year and so it has created a new column called year by extracting the year from the order date. It's great. This is what I would have done as a human if I'm trying to find this answer. Then it has done grouping by year. Perfect. And then it's 
going to do a sum of revenue. And so I know this information by year. And now it has plotted a bar chart with the information across all these different years. And then it has taken a step forward and given me more information that I could possibly use because you know, asking a question and get, getting an answer is never the end of your analysis. You always have more questions. So we are preempting some of the questions and just giving you the answers to them. Um, so what I talked about earlier, discoverability, right? We want to make sure that you're able to find trusted resources. We want to give you full transparency. We are showing uh, all the things that we are doing, basically showing the work, and then we, we are giving you the path forward. So now, if I actually like the analysis that our Sigma has done, I can actually select this and maybe a few of these and then open a workbook. And now I'm back into my previous self-serve mode where I'm able to start off with some preliminary, preliminary charts that are already created for me and then keep on iterating on this. So it makes it super easy for your end users to get to the right answers pretty quickly. And that's the demo for us today.